What's up guys? I'm back with another video and we have Joyce. 44 years old, 600 plus pounds. I guess she really doesn't know what her weight is, like most of us don't. But uh, yeah, from the clips I've seen from her, pretty exciting episode. It's going to be a lot of fun. So uh, yeah, let's just get right into it then. Okay, Kansas. Mordor's muffin? What the hell is that? Does she have warts or something? Can fat make you get more warts? I'm not really sure. When I wake up in the morning, my first thoughts are a combination of disgust at how my life is now and shocked that I was even able to make it to another day. Because every minute of it is a struggle now. From the first moment... Fair. We're usually surprised when we wake up first thing, because you really shouldn't have it that size. ...moment to the last. So I question why God even wakes me up. Just to go through another day like this. I'm just a prisoner here doing nothing because of how big I've gotten. And my weight makes it so hard for me to breathe. I have to use oxygen a lot of times just to get the air my body needs. Damn, so she's worse off than a lot of them on the show. It also looks like she's really short, but this is kind of par for the course. Kind of hating yourself a little bit, all that. So I know my health is in a really bad place because of that. Oh no, she got foundation fat. When you have to start pouring concrete under the bed, you probably reach a level of fat where you need to start thinking about things a little more. You know what I'm saying? And it's at the point where I can't even take care of myself or live on my own anymore. I have to pay one of my friends to be my caregiver and help me do everything now. Dawn? How much money we talking? Also, she's got to be short because her belly started eating her leg. It looks like it's like hanging right below her knee at this point. Dawn. Morning. Hi, Good enabler. Morning. You ready to get up? I am. Dawn lives with me and takes care of me. And without her, things would be even worse because I can't even get out of. No, she did not just crab claw her coochie. That's a crazy way to move somebody. Just kind of like the Donald Trump strat. Just grab them right but All right, Joyce. I see you. Bet on my own. That's how bad off my body is now. And then once I'm up, I'm barely even able to go a few feet at one time. My weight's too much for me to move around. And I also have bad lymphedema on my lower body that makes any movement of mine really painful. So I have to do everything right here in the same room, including... Damn, this poor lady's going through a lot. Also, you get the Coca-Cola, like, nightgown or whatever? Do you think you just drink enough Coke they send you a polar pair, like, nightgown? That could be a real life hack, get a free gown out of it. I'm going to the bathroom. So I have a portable potty chair that's next to my bed and when I'm done Dawn has to clean me up and that's probably the most humiliating part of my day okay. does that tub say feed the beast on it that's kind of wild too hey buckets ready I'm gonna go ahead and stand up and go on over okay you wanna hold this up yep what I do for Joyce is get her out of bed in the morning help her go to the bathroom and then I bathe Joyce probably two to three times a week. It's a very long process and... Wait, you're a live-at-home, like, caregiver, and you only bathe her two or three times a week? What the hell's going on the other days? Because you're there to literally help her get by. She's paying you. And you're cr crab clawing things? Like, I don't know what's involved here, but I think she's not doing a very good job. By the end of it, Joyce and I are both exhausted. Oh, baby. Bathing me is a very extensive process because of how hard it is to get to all the areas of my body. We wash the lower part of my stomach and underneath it in my bed. But once she's done, okay. she has to use a hairdryer 
to dry those areas. Oh, buddy. That's one way to heat things up in the bedroom. All right, we're crab clawing, heat things up. This is going really fast here. Because if any moisture gets caught under a fold, it'll get trapped there and mold causes sores that will get infected. But Dawn also has to rub a zinc oxide cream on me to help prevent sores. Because without it, the natural chafing I have under my folds can start to break the skin over time. And... True. I used to keep that stuff like on tap pretty much because you would need it. Even if you bathe pretty much daily, you could still get one of these rashes. If you let it go unchecked, it gets really friggin' bad. I'm concerned about the sores because that's one of the things that has put me in the hospital before. <laughs> you never did that. So you can't rush any of the process or it will be really bad for me. Once she does that, I have to move back on the potty to clean my backside and other areas that get easily infected if we ignore them. She's smuggling pepperoni under there or something? Oh, no, that's got to be that lymphedema thing she was talking about. i just never seen it in that weird a place. But, all right, let this lady that does the Mortal Kombat move get up under here and get over here with that thing. Okay. And after that, we move to the last location. Okay. And we finish the upper half of my body and my legs sitting in the recliner with, like, sponge washing. We got a travel team here. We just travel all over the place to get this bath done. That's kind of neat, I guess. But the entire bathing process can take close to an hour. And I'm completely physically and emotionally exhausted by the time I'm done. And Dawn knows I'll be starving at that point. So she always has something ready for me to eat. If you need a snack time during bath time, things have got a little out of hand. Like if we're stopping for Dunkaroos during during our wag like rag offs or whatever, yeah, we, we got a freaking issue here, people. I get so excited that I finally get to eat. It's the moment I've been looking forward to since I finished my last meal the night before. I don't know why, but I swear that friggin' box just said diced wieners, but I don't think that's what that is. That first bite is the best moment of my day. When I'm eating, I think nothing. That's what the best part of it is. Is when I'm sitting there eating, I have no worries about anything. I'm just thinking about how good the food is. And that's my life. I'll sit there in my recliner for the rest of the day, and Don will bring me food and I'll eat it until it's time to go back to bed. I basically just live to eat now, and I never leave this room. And that- I mean, I could have got way up higher if I had a friggin' Don giving me buffet service all the time. And that little Joe's Crab Shack move she does over there. That's not gonna change unless I give up food and stop eating like this. But I can't. It's what makes waking up worth it for me now. The only thing I can really think of is if somehow I could change my past. But there's no way I can do that. Uh, wouldn't oxygen and omelets taste a little weird? I'm just thinking about it, but I hated having that thing up my nose anytime I was friggin' hospitalized, so that has to kind of suck. Early on, when I was really young, I was a normal-sized child. My parents got divorced, like, when I was around three, and my father was not present in my life after they divorced. That's young, but also she looks like a little Debbie double, so I can see how this progressed pretty quickly. So I was mostly just with my mother. But things changed when I was seven, because that's when my mom started dating someone who would become my stepdad. He had right, three sons girl. and a daughter. But when they decided to get married, my mom moved in with them, but sent me to live with my grandma. I thought Your mom sucks. She just sent you away so she could go build her new family? Like, how does that work? That's pretty disgusting. I'd be pretty pissed at your mom if I were you. I felt abandoned by my mom. Like, she didn't want me anymore. 
So I was upset and really hurt by that, but I did love being with my grandmother because she gave me constant attention and was always feeding me and making sure I had what I needed. And I think that's when my love for food probably started. You had a nice grandma, because my mom had to buy us Christmas gifts every year from ours just so we would think she loved us. But also, once when I was in like third grade, she took me to get a Christmas gift. I cursed her out, she turned around and took me back, and then she brought my, or bought my brothers a Game Shark to make me more jealous. I still cussed her out again, I was a bad kid. But she fed me so much that I put on around 40 to 50 pounds while I was with her. I was 8 then and was around 90 to 100 pounds. So I was getting big, but I was constantly asking my mom when I could go back with her. And after a while, she eventually had- They were training her to be a Karen real early on with that haircut. That looks crazy. To come and get me to take me back. But when she did, she was shocked and very upset because of how big I'd gotten. When she... Uh, I really don't think she gets a say on that one if she throws you away and then decides to come back. I, I mean, I guess she could be a little upset, but it's pretty gross that she just sent you away so she could go start her own little thing. Joyce was living with my mother. I had no idea my mother was feeding her so much. And when I saw Joyce as large as she was, I was just horrified. And I was really angry at my mother that she had allowed my daughter to gain that much weight. After that, my mom took me back to Kansas to live with her and my new family, but it wasn't and you became an accountant, apparently. Man, who misses an old, stupid-looking calculator? That thing's friggin' huge. How I thought it'd be there. Because she had put me on a strict diet after I left my grandmother's. So I was in this new place with a new family, and I couldn't have the one thing that could come for me and help me feel better. So I was really upset with my mom, and for the next few years, it seemed like we were fighting constantly. Thankfully, when I was 12, my mom and stepdad that nightmare fuel mouse man i remember that sucker from when i was a kid look at that thing he looks like he's just gonna crawl through your window and freaking bite your head off he's a creepy dude you remember the animatronics too that was freaking creepy but now i kind of want to see him again just so you can see kids run out like screaming and crying it's freaking hilarious i got a divorce and we moved out and i was so relieved to be out of that home and just with my mom we still had a lot of conflict, though, because she kept me on these diets to try to get me to lose weight. But it didn't help me lose, ever. Because no matter what anyone did, I'd find ways to get food. I mean, I had my methods, too. My mom even chained mine shut at one point, but I found that key in, like, less than 24 hours. And over the next couple of years, I got my license and a job at a fast food place. And at that point, I was beyond my mom's constant reach. She couldn't stop me from eating what I wanted. And so at 16, that's when the weight started piling on me. So we went straight for the Burger King backlash. I mean, I guess if your mom's restricting your food at home, you got to get it somewhere. So just get a friggin' job there so you can hustle the hell out of them for some french fries. But my mom could eventually tell what I was doing. And when she figured it out, she was really upset. And she tried to get me to stop eating. Her goal became to get me away from working at a fast food place. So she helped me start a home daycare center. I was hesitant to work with my mom, but I couldn't resist. Because that's what I wanted to do. And I loved it, and I was thankful my mom did that in the end. But it still didn't stop me from eating like I wanted. And by the time I graduated high school when I was 18, I was around 350 pounds. Okay, I think I was more than that. But I going from a fast food job to a daycare job where the kids have the best damn snacks ever? Like, that's just one evil to another. I guarantee that you were stealing all kinds of them kids' little gummy snacks and stuff. After high school, I was working at the daycare full-time, but I was still eating just as much and gaining. And by the time I was 20, I was well into the mid-400s. But when I was 21, I started seeing someone. And when things started to get serious between us, I started having these nightmares with me and an event that happened with one of my stepbrothers. Oh no. I hate when it goes full evil like this. There's always freaking something. It's gross. It's disgusting. This is the worst part of every episode. When I was eight, my mom and stepdad left my stepbrother to babysit me. I went to sleep and I woke up with him sitting on my bed and he was rubbing my back. And that is the initial memory that I had. 
for years upon years upon years. Under the jail. Just putting under it. It's so gross, man. I hate it. I hate hearing it. The dreams are just kind of what followed that. Me trying to fight him off. Like, one dream was like literally me of just scratching at his arms. At that point, I didn't know if they were just dreams or if I was really piecing it together myself or what happened because it's all just so distorted. So, I I'm sorry all that happened to you. I joke around a lot, but I really do feel for people when they go through something like this. It's disgusting and it's just trauma that's going to make the rest of their life. They're going to have to deal with this extensive therapy, whatever they need. But you can't take a child's innocence like that. Even though it was another child in this case, it's disgusting. It's gross. I hate it. I went to the community counseling center and went and talked to someone and just tried to piece together what happened. I kept all of this to myself. I didn't tell my boyfriend I just broke up with him. I didn't even tell my mom until recently. And when I told her what had happened, she didn't really have much of a reaction to it. Well, she's not winning any Mother of the Year awards, that's for damn sure. Fortunately, when I told her it was in the middle of an argument, I didn't say it that kindly. She just said, you never told me anything like that. And I said, yeah, I didn't want to get everybody upset and mad. And it kind of was not. Screw getting them mad. I mean, you got to get that off your chest if something that terrible happened to you. A subject that kept on going. At the time when all these repressed memories had come back, I just tried to move past it and get on with my life. I focused on building the daycare business with my mom, and I kept getting bigger, and I was just under 500 by the time I was 25. Okay, I weighed in at 509 at 25, and that was the first time I ever went to a bariatric surgeon, and I sat through the whole, like, hour-long conference, whatever, I forget what you call it, but... I sat through it. I didn't go through with it. I wish I would have at this point because it's done wonders for me now, so. And around that time is when my father passed away. He had a heart attack at 44 because of his weight. And I knew I would end up like him if I didn't change. So I tried to start cutting back on what I was eating to lose weight, but the daycare was growing and I was running it all. So every day I had a lot of stress. So food also. So wait, she's 44 right now. She's seen this pattern before. If she doesn't get it right, man, uh, she don't want it. I mean, I'm praying for her right now, but I don't know, guys. So help me deal with that. It got so busy, I ended up needing help, and I hired my best friend, Dawn, to help me. When I first started working for Joyce at the daycare, it was maybe six months after we had initially met through a mutual friend. At the time, she could still move short distances by herself without a walker. Uh, how would you guys feel about that? Would you let her take care of your child? Because I feel like if there's something that's time urgent, like your kid's choking, she's not going to be able to get to them in time. I feel like that's kind of a liability, a risk. Like, I don't think I would trust that. And then Joy started gaining more and more weight and just went downhill. I was in my mid-30s when I would gotten up to around 550, and my weight was getting to a point where it was hard for me to get around like I needed. And that started to affect the daycare and my business, because if I can't react fast to something, it could be dangerous for the kids. So exactly, and I think the only reason her weight didn't progress more quickly is because she had those kids and she had to get up and move around more than most people to get up to this size. So eventually it got to a point where I was too big and I had to close it, and it was heartbreaking for me. And then a few years later, I started developing a really bad lymphedema on my lower body. And that combined with my weight caused me to be bedridden when I was 38. And I had to hire Dawn to move in with me and become my caretaker. As time had... Damn, so that's four years away from where I'm sitting right now. And the second you get bedbound, it's game over. That's where I was, like, obsessed with not getting to that point. Past, Joyce needed some extra help. So I ended up moving in to the house, like a permanent fixture in the house. I haven't been out of the house in over three years. I'm already- Okay, so apparently the hoo-ha handler does everything for her and just, she gets to sit there in bed. I'm 44 and I'm the age now that my dad was when he died. 
and I think I'm even bigger than he was at this age. So I'm terrified that I'm close to dying right now and that I'm gonna die before my time because I let food kill me. Hi, Joyce. Hi, Mom. Come on, Bubbo. Oh, Mom brought the puppy. At least she shows up. She didn't abandon her again. I guess she's there for her in her time of need. I can start the lasagna. Mm. I know my family and Dawn are all worried about me, too. And they don't think I'm going to make it much longer. You're not. But just like me, they keep doing what they've been doing. And help me eat the stuff I'm not supposed to have now. Is that four cans of tomatoes? How friggin' big is this lasagna gonna be? And I know when I do that, my mom's judging me when I eat a lot. But as much as it bothers me, there's part of me where I don't care. I almost kind of have the attitude of, like, duh. I don't get this big, eating small amounts. I mean, that's kind of what we're all thinking inside our head, but it's just a total neglect for your own self-care that allows you to do that and think that way. So why would you expect me to do so? So I just want to say, you know, shut up and give me the food, and then leave if you have a problem with it. Sometimes when I see Joyce eating large amounts of food, I'm livid. I'm just livid. But I'm really... Holy shit, Stouffer sister, what are you doing? Those are the biggest damn lasagnas I've ever seen. This lady had to steal the dishes from, like, the cafeteria for all the little kids. Like, this is a whole serving that, like, served every kid in a damn school. I'm really, always really fearful. I live in a lot of fear. Because I just... I just... I just feel that she's going to die, and that uh, there's nothing I can do about it. Holy oh, Texas toast, man. This lady's the lasagna leviathan. What is she eating that much lasagna for? I mean, the shit's good, but come on. Here you go. Thanks. Is that meatballs? That looks good. It does look good. I think Joyce is at the point now where she knows she really does have to do something. Joyce can't go on much longer like this. It's good. She doesn't have to do anything. You guys do it all for her and then bring her heaps of lasagna. I'm gonna kill her. I know I can't keep doing this for much longer. Even if I live past my 45th birthday, something has to change soon because my addiction to food is killing me and it's taking everything. And the world is just passing me by. I watch on social media the whole world happening around me, and I'm sitting here. Uh, that's the same boat I was in. I was sitting there watching YouTube like, these people are boring. I could do better than that. But, uh, yeah, I spent a lot of time on YouTube, a lot of time just kind of, like, lurking, seeing what other people are doing, because I was doing absolutely nothing. And it makes me so, so sad. But none of my sadness or fear has been enough to make me stop from eating. And I'm at a point now where I just don't know what to do. I always wish that there was just a pill that she could take and that she wouldn't, you know, have this horrible addiction. Okay, sink a couple blue rhinos from the gas station in there and see what happens. Maybe she'll get all charged up and she'll start running around chasing Dawn around the damn house or something. I don't know how this works. I know I'm close to a breaking point and there's nothing I can do about it because I can't stop and I don't know how to change to get to where I won't end up eating to where it kills me. So it's inevitable at this point that I either find some sort of help or nothing else is gonna happen but death. All right, send in doctor now. We need the fat Avengers to come in here because this lasagna is going unchecked and this is a lot of friggin' lasagna. Like this lady needs help. These people need to get away from her. I once you can sit there and do nothing for yourself, it gets so much easier just to sit there and get fatter and fatter and fatter. I called Dr. Now in Houston to try to get help with my weight before it's too late. I called all the local doctors and none of them are even willing to try and help me. So I'm kind of surprised by that because I only had to call one and he was like, yeah, come on in, we'll figure something out. You just have to lose weight beforehand. But Dr. McKenna, thank you again. Love that guy, man.
Going all the way to Texas is my only option, and I'm terrified about it because this isn't gonna be easy at all. My biggest problem is getting there, but Dr. Now is trying to set up a transport for me to take all the way to Texas, and I'm really hoping he can, but there's no- All right, wait till the paramedics see the fun way you get out of bed, cause I imagine their jaw's just gonna hit the damn floor. Way for me to come back or make the trip again. So the way I figure it, this is a one-way trip for me. So that makes this even scarier. But Dawn is willing to- Okay, so she's just gonna straight up move before she even knows if she's gonna be accepted into the program? Little bold, little bold here. To be down there with me for as long as I need to help me and take care of me. And she's also packing up all our stuff and trying to get everything taken care of so we can be free and clear to move down. Packing up all our stuff means grabbing the powdered sugar from above the microwave? All right, Dawn, I guess we see where your list of importance comes in. So poor Dawn is doing pretty much all of the work. Was that powder? I am preparing to get Joyce and I moved down to Houston. Joyce hasn't been able to physically help me pack, so it's been hard, but it is Joyce's last chance to get the help she needs. And if there's anything that I can do for Joyce to get better, I'm going to do it. So the first thing Joyce says is make sure you pack all the cooking utensils, forget everything else, just leave me here. We don't need furniture, but we definitely need the cooktop, all this stuff. I mean, all right. Doing this is a huge act of faith and trust, but it's my last hope and option. And I either do this or die soon. So I'm confident about this choice, but I still feel really scared. Uprooting my entire life here is scary, but I'm finding the courage to do this because it's the shot that I have to take to be able to live. But I mean, at least she's taking the first step. That's always the hardest one to take, but uh, I mean, right now, I still have some kind of hope for her, even if I, I don't think this is going to go good because I've seen a clip before. My mom and aunt are coming today to support me in this choice, even though they don't want me to leave. Hi, Joyce. Hi. Hello there. Hi. How are you? Good, good, good. Oh. How are you? Good, how are you? Good. Boy. How do I look? Friggin' fantastic. Uh, did you bring the lasagna? In, sit down. <laughs> so how are you feeling? I'm doing good. You look good. Yeah, not too bad. On what planet? Your new journey, right? Mm-hmm. Oh, I hate that look. Oh, it's the look what you've done to yourself look. Damn, I hate when people give me that look. It'll be really good. How are you feeling about all this? It really is a big risk, you know? It is a risk, but I mean, what am I? This is like kind of like the end, you know? If I don't do this, then it's just kind of waiting until my body gives out and I'm not here, so. It's worth the risk to me. Just okay, at least she realizes what's at stake. She doesn't have much longer left, so this is like last shot. Like, shoot your shot, at least take a chance. Also, mm -hmm. we feel the same way. This is like your last chance. Duh. Joyce has to make the changes to save her life. She has to. She has no other choice, to be honest with you. But my hope for Joyce's future is for her to get her life back to be able to do all the things that she loves because she deserves the best. I haven't heard her say much about her hobbies or what she loves. I just heard her talk about work, how she got rid of a boyfriend because some creepy stuff happened to her when she was little, but I'm hoping for the best. It means a lot for my mom and aunt to come over and show me support and love. They know I need it right now because I'm really scared. This is gonna be one of the hardest things I've ever done in my life. You need help getting up? Oh, no. <laughs> you did pretty good. All right, so she jumped right up. So what I've learned now is the way Dawn gets her out of bed is all for uh, jollies, I guess. She could get up on her own. You wanna come over towards me some more? <laughs> There you go. Look back at it. Sit straight back. Good. You just get your butt as far back as you can. This is it, because I have it. a lymphedema. That's all right. They're going to get your legs. We're going to swing them over. <laughs> I'm going to try and support your back. Big country. Oh, 
wait till they see how we swing her over. I can't wait. Okay, you ready? One, two, three. I got you. Hold on to me. Hold on to me. Damn it, Dawn, what are you doing? We didn't see your finishing move. I was expecting a show. Hey. Uh, here. Grab my arm. There you go. What? Yeah. All right. All right. Yes. My right, my right side pocket. I don't feel balanced. You're not don't worry, just problem. take hey, deep breaths. We got you. Deep breaths. We got you. Oh, this is so much scarier than I was even imagining. And I'm just terrified. Uh, is that snow on the ground? Because I don't see this going well. Because when I was probably about mid-550s, I stepped on some black ice at a parking ride. That's when I learned pigs can fly, buddy. I went straight up, straight onto my back. It hurt like hell. If this isn't going to work and something's going to go wrong. Slow, 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 slow. Don't push. We're not. We're okay. pulling. Just making sure. Can someone hold my hand? Another person? I got you. Aww. Come right here. I want you to hold her hand over here. Uh, uh, it's okay. What a nice guy holding her hand like that. But also, I, I mean, I imagine she doesn't feel very secure on there because you got all kinds of fat under you. You're shifting, you're jiggling. There's a little ripple in your wiggle or whatever. I, I mean, I imagine. Hey, that was just your curve. This trip is a pretty big deal for both Joyce and I. So I'm stressed and anxious. But I'm very ready to support her, and she's going to be in front of me on the medical transport. One, two, three. So that way... Okay, so she's actually a good friend. She's supportive. She's not just enabling. If there's anything that I have to help with, I can go help Joyce. I'm just praying that it's smooth for her, that she just gets there and there's no problems with anything. Love you. I love you. They're in good hands. These guys are going to take care of you. Isn't it kind of crazy how being that big kind of like just ages you? Because the mom looks about the same age as her in this like right side by side. I'm already in so much pain. And this is just the start of the whole drive and journey. So I don't know how much longer I'm going to be able to do this. And what I'm going to do if this gets to be too much for me. Hello? Hi. Did you take a different route? I lost sight of the van, and I followed my GPS. Ah. Uh, I know we'll be back up and down. All right. How do you lose a van that has the extra 2,000 pounds of weight in it? Like, it can't be exactly speeding. I'm sure it has one of those little trackers on it, because it's a medical transport to say if it's speeding. Just keep me posted. Okay. Okay. Bye. Okay. Bye. We've only been on the road for a little bit. Less than an hour, I think. Hi, Joris. Hi, Dr. Now. Uh, how you doing? I'm in a lot of pain. All right. Uh, we're going to get you in real quick and check you out, okay? Okay, thank you. Something funny about that stethoscope, like I wanted to buy it and I found it on Amazon because I was going to make a little joke about it. 330 damn dollars. Like I am not that into the joke, but you can find one that looks just like it for that on Amazon. Thank you. Real gold. Joseph's condition looks to already be severely deteriorated and she likely doesn't have much time before things get even worse for her. Alright guys, thank you so much. Okay, thank you. We are like angels. <sighs> Hats off to those guys, because it's pretty impressive what they do every day trying to help somebody who hasn't tried to help themselves yet. So gotta love our uh, emergency care people out here, EMTs and stuff. Alright, now that we got you inside, you feeling okay? Feeling much better now. Do you have any pain anywhere? Just a little bit, like residual pain from being in pain for so long. We'll get you feeling better real soon. Okay, thank you. Mm. All right, okay. and um, no shortness of breath? A little bit, yeah. It's hard for me to take a deep breath right now. Okay, let me listen to your lungs. Take a deep breath. I always wondered about this, but is it harder with a stethoscope to hear through all those layers of fat, or does that thing just pick up anything? 
Like, could you just sit in a cave and hear a bunch of bats flying around with that thing? Uh, the good news is, you don't sound like you're in any sort of pressure or failure right now. Any other issues bothering you? Yeah, I'm a little hungry. I didn't eat all day. Well, don't worry. <laughs> you have eaten the food that belongs to the next three years ahead of time, okay? Yeah, doctor, now you are straight cold-blooded. I can't believe he said that, but I mean, he's not friggin' lying. I think I'm a couple years ahead of myself, too. I'm just trying to, like, fall back back into the normal range. And maybe it's more than three years, Dr. Now. You know All right. <laughs> you know that, right? Yes, I do. All right. But we'll get you something, okay? <laughs> All right. But anything else bothering you other than hunger? I didn't go to the bathroom the whole time. You need to go. That's probably all that damn cheese in that lasagna. That had to be at least three months worth of food right there. Go to the bathroom? I do. All right. How much you can get up and do on your own? I can walk a few steps with a walker. Okay. You go to the bathroom by yourself? I do. Okay. I use a bedside commode. Bedside commode? All right. We'll get you one so you can use that now. But then after that... Wait, we still lost Dawn here somewhere. Where the hell is she at? We'll get you situated to the room and uh, get some lab work on you and run some tests we need to do. So make sure it's okay. 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 Hopefully, once we run the test we need on Joyce, we are able to determine that there is no immediate life-threatening issue with her because with her current condition, it is not likely that she will survive any serious medical issues right now. So we will... Damn, look at that thing. She's got a grimace foot. That's crazy. She's got to be diabetic or something. Also, what is Dawn doing not trimming her toenails? You would think she would do that for her. Good job. I mean, do we have to blur it? I'm pretty sure it's hidden by uh whatever's going on there. How is it black? Is that mold growing on it? Is it breathing black mold like toxic? Is that why she needs the oxygen? How are you doing, Joyce? Okay. Okay, George, now that we got you situated, let's see what the wig is. You all right? Yeah. Okay, just breathe. You're good. You just breathe. Looks like you are... Oh, rumpel foreskin. This is not good. She's pushing eight? How tall is she? This is nuts. I didn't think she was that big. 7.58. All right, Joyce, so it looks like we have a lot of weight to lose with you. So we're going to get you started on some physical therapy and a healthy diet. But first, we're going to run some tests to make sure there's nothing happening with this 14-hour uh, travel and no blood clot or any other issues. Then uh, we'll work on getting your weight done and helping you get... Blood clots, very serious issue. They happen all the time to people this big, especially if they're just laying in bed all day. I would like to know what the hell is going on with their feet, though. That's got to be diabetes. Because I just learned if you're diabetic, the sugar, if you test your feet, it's like 200 higher than your fingers. More mobile. Okay? Okay, thank you. All right. I'll see you later. Okay, see you later. I mean, actually, her neck's probably what's choking her off. It's probably not the uh, black mold on her stomach, but her neck's definitely choking her chicken here. Hey, Dawn. Hi. Hi. I'm in so much pain, and all I can do right now is rest. But I'm hoping once I recover, all my tests will be good and I'll be able to start my whole journey to getting healthy and a new life. Because I've waited a long time. You think she's going to ask for any, like, Popeye's painkillers, a little bit of Mercy McDonald's, like a Baconator break or whatever? I don't know. She definitely probably looks like she wants some fast food. Long time for a chance like this, and I'm very ready for it. I just hope it gets a little easier from here. 
nope gets a whole hell of a lot harder and uh it never gets easier you just got to push yourself a little bit get out of your comfort zone she's trying i'll give her that she's trying right now you can do this choice This much activity is really hard on my body. What activity? You're just riding. Like, I haven't seen her push herself yet. Dr. Now's doing all the pushing. It's hard on him. And I don't think Dr. Now understands that and just how much this is for me. But I don't know if I can do a whole lot more because this is really painful and I feel like I'm about at my limit. But I'll try to stand long enough to get my weight. I just don't know how long I can last. That's what she said, but uh, she it couldn't be that hard. But although little step ups and stuff like that a lot harder when you get this big. I used to have to like pause at curbs and step step. I couldn't just like one leg it when I was that big. You ready? Mm -hmm. All this right. is the first time I'm ever stepping up on something for a really long time, so okay. I'm a little nervous. Told you. Uh, don't be nervous. All right, we all sit. Damn, I didn't realize she was that caked up because that thing's just waving at me while she's stepping up there. But I guess 800 pounds, you'd have a little jiggle back there. Uh, 388. I can't be right. I gotta sit back down, sorry. No, shut up. We take those. Like, that's legit right there. That was a legit hospital scale. This lady just lost half her body weight in, like, three days or whatever it was. I'm almost falling. All right, we got you. Okay. Uh, 388 was not right. <laughs> that have been a miraculous loss. Uh, we help you lose a lot, but not that much. We, we just wait till we catch your breath, and then I will be zero it, and we can get the correct weight. I'd prefer to to skip it. On the way back, I almost wasn't able to make my way back. Damn, hey, um, so we are going to take the 388, because she's not going again, like, forget it, guys. Uh, we'll try again later, but at least she got a little exercise today. But this poor level of activity is not good. So you realize that your functional capacity is very, very low and you're in a very dangerous situation. So this is a matter of life and death for you and you're running out of time. Yeah, probably means I'm staying here a lot longer. Well, not necessarily. Pack your bags, baby. We're spending a few nights because this controlled diet seems like it might be the only way she's going to make some kind of success. Don, her mom, they're kind of just giving her whatever she wants. That's a recipe for disaster right there. On your head is up to you and how hard you want to work. And once you get to the place you need that is safe, we'll send you home. Okay? Mm -hmm. All right. Let's take you back to your room so you can rest. So far, she hasn't shown me much evidence that she's willing to do what she needs to turn her situation around. And I'm taking. I mean, if Doctor Now's saying that, he's seen it a time or two, so he's he kind of. I think he knows when somebody comes in there who's going to be successful and who's not, just from like the error and just trying over and over with people trying to help them. All right, you feel okay? Uh huh. You gave me a little workout with my legs, but I'm doing good. Doctor, now, you dog, you. Oh, I didn't see that one covered. Well, uh, that's a whole idea. You know you are 4'11". For your height, you should be uh, under 100 pounds. So <laughs> you still have 500 pounds to lose before you uh, hit your goal. And what? She should be under 100? That's what, 658 pounds she needs to lose? Holy hell. That's not going to be easy to do. But if you do what you need, then we'll be able to get you to that point, OK? okay thank you for helping me. Well, uh, that's my job. But remember, all the hard work is going to come from you, OK? OK. All right, I'll be back to see you again soon. 
In the meantime, I'll get you some help to get you back in the bed. Okay, thank you. You're welcome. Dawn, we need your finishing move again. Oh, I, I, when I had this job when I was 19, I had a supervisor named Dawn. And one time out of curiosity, I just read her journal. And it was like Star Trek corn. Like, it was the insane stuff where she was like the, the heroine of the story. And everybody was just saving her with their ding-dongs. Like, it was insane. I wish I never read it. I really want to go home. Because it's really hard being here. But I'm happy about the progress I've made so far and how much my health has improved. Even if Dr. Now doesn't agree with me about that. I really am working hard and I have no doubt I can keep this going on my own and show Dr. Now I can do this without having to be here. Hi. Hey. Oh, my soup. I brought you soup. And a little soup tray. Over the Hell is she gonna eat soup on her back like that? Like this is gonna burn, man, because it's probably hot. Last one, I was seeing some positive improvement with Joyce. Not as much as I had hoped, but enough to give me hope that she's starting to go in the right direction. She's been trying a little harder with PT, but she still isn't walking on her own. Belly soup. I've never seen that move before. That's impressive, actually. This could be like a talent in a talent show. And she still convinced herself she needs her oxygen tank to breathe when there is no reason for it. So we still have a lot of work to do with her. But at least there is some light at the end of the tunnel with her attitude and choices she's making. So I'm happy about that progress. And what That's good because a lot of times whenever we get to this point, we're just so negative, so down. You just refuse to believe that that light at the end of the sh tunnel is shining for you. Or you're it's just negative city. Uh, <laughs> negative city. That's why you have to uh, kind of find your positives here and there when you're that big. Ago, when we've got an accurate weight, she was down to 637 from 758. So she lost 121 pounds in the first one on a controlled diet. Damn, 121? She's cooking. I didn't think she was successful. All right, well, we started out good. This is friggin' great. I'm happy for her. And now this one, we have her down to 553 for total weight loss of 205 pounds in two months. And we have her... Holy hell, how'd she do that? She lost an adult man in two months. That's nuts. We're in a much better place than she was when she arrived a couple of months ago. So I feel like we can take the next step of seeing how she does on her own at home. Alright, well, usually it don't go well when we get to that point because you're going back to your old ways, old enablers, everything. But 200 pounds in two months, 205, whatever it was, that's freaking impressive. I can't believe she managed to lose that much. Because in one month, I want to see you at my clinic for another appointment. And I want you to lose 50 pounds by then. Okay, wow. That's a goal. If you stick to the diet, that should be easy for you, okay? Okay. Right. You just lost 100 pounds a month for the last two months. 50 a month? That's easy cake money for you. Right. Will do. But then here's the other thing. Okay. We're not sending any medical transport for you to pick you up. You got that? I'll do my best. I'll try, doctor, now. I hope so. But there's one more thing I want you to do. What's that? I want you to get off this oxygen. You don't need it, so when you go home, you need to wean yourself off of it. You're asking a lot, doctor, now. I'm so she never needed the oxygen from the start? Was it just part of her, like, I need everyone to do everything for me because I can't breathe act? I'm not asking for anything you can or you shouldn't do, okay? Okay, thank okay. you. All right, I'll see you later. Thank you. Hey, take care. Dr. Now sends over PT three times a week, and that's been hard. But I have another session today, so we'll just have to see how it goes. Hi. Hey, Don, how are you? I'm good. Hey, Joyce, how's Hi, it going? Glenn, how are you? Hey, more polar bears. I guess somebody else likes Coke. It's good to see you. It always feels like they push me a little too hard. And because of that, my knee's been really hurting. 
and I'm hoping that I No, your knee hurts because you're still over 500 pounds. It has nothing to do with pushing you at all, the way you need to be pushed. I don't do anything to make my knee worse because it's finally feeling better. I'm thinking maybe not doing the oxygen as much and taking it off while we're working. Well, you know what? Let's do this. Why don't you go ahead and take it off now and we'll get started and we'll check your oxygen throughout the session, okay? Doctor now has been wanting me to stop using my oxygen because he thinks I don't need it. So I don't know how I feel about the big gulp still being right next to her chair. Hopefully it's full of water and that's just a lot of wishful thinking. So I stop, but sleeping and exercising are the only time I still get worried I don't have it. Because if it gets too hard for me to breathe, I'm really scared about what could happen. So hopefully I can handle it all today and do what I need. We're gonna do marching in place. I've been working really hard to do what I can and make progress with my ability. The obese go marching one by one, the fridge, the fridge. <laughs> I'm stupid. I need to do more. I know it's not as much as PT and Dr. Now wants, but I really am pushing myself to do as much as I can. All right, feeling good? You ready? Catch your breath? Mm hmm So what we're gonna do is we're gonna walk over to the bed. So I want you standing up right here in front of your chair. Dr. Now wants me to get to his clinic in a couple weeks without a medical transport. So I have to get to where I can handle walking to a car and getting in by then. Or I'll miss my chance to show Dr. Now I can do this on my own. I mean, she lost over 200 pounds. You would think she could make it to the car at this point. It should be a hell of a lot easier. So I'm working to get my stamina up to do that and hit my weight loss goal because I have to get surgery. Without it, I don't have a chance. Good job. Thank you. But to me, she doesn't look 200 pounds lighter. I don't know. I'm fat blind. I got so fat, I really can't tell anymore. But that doesn't look 200 pounds lighter to me. Really good, Joyce. All right, ladies. Always nice to see you. Nice to see you. Keep it going. Okay. See you Monday. Have a good weekend. Okay. Bye. All right. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye. Oh, he really does work you. But look at the progress she made. When she first came down here, she could barely walk two steps without her walker. And like today, you could see her walk from her chair to her bed, which is pretty amazing. Yeah, a small victories, but doing something like that actually becomes a pretty big deal whenever you get that big. Because just getting out of the chair is a struggle, her knee, whatever. So getting to the bed on her own, while it might not seem like a big deal to a lot of you, it's a big deal. I think that was a good workout today, and I'm proud of myself for doing what I needed. So I really am giving this my all to get to where I need and move ahead. It's just a lot. I've been working really hard the past month, but I'm still struggling to get up and walk. So I'm not 100% sure why. I've done PT every time they come over and I've completely stuck to the 1200 calorie a day diet. Uh, if we flash back and the first thing I see is her eating, I'm not sure if she's sticking to this, because she really don't look much smaller to me at all. Maybe I'm totally wrong. The only thing I can figure is that maybe for my body, I can't lose weight on 1,200 calories. I think I'm done. Okay. Thank you. What do you mean? You're low-calorie resistant? Like, you would be the only person on Earth that can't lose weight with a low-calorie diet. And because I'm still struggling to walk, there's no way I can go anywhere without a medical transport. And I told Dr. Now's office that if they wanted to send a transport for me, I'd be there. But they didn't, so there's nothing I can do. Damn, she's making demands out of Dr. Now? She's ballsy. I can't believe that. That man is about to rip her a new one. Don can't push me in a wheelchair all the way to a vehicle and then into the clinic. So I told Dr. Now's office that when they called to follow up with me. And they said Dr. Now wanted to set up a video call to see me and talk to me. I'm figuring because he thinks I'm not doing what I need. There you go. But I really, really am. And I'm willing to go see I don't trust her. I, she don't look like she's lost weight. I don't even think she looks much smaller than when she first got to the hospital at this point. See him if he'd help me get there. Okay. Hi, Joyce. 
Alice, how are you? Good, how are you? I'm doing okay. So, what's going on for you to miss your appointment? Um, I've had some transportation issues, as you know. So, I've been trying to figure out how to get there. Um, I did look into an ambulance, but it was just too expensive for me to um, afford to go that way. Get you a scooty bike. I don't care how you get there. This isn't a game that you can afford to play. Especially when somebody finally decided to help you after you were just complaining. No surgeon in your area will help you. Then don't, what's, it, what's the word? Something a gift horse in the mouth. I don't know. I don't do anything with my little ponies, but y'all can. Well, George, you should have lost enough weight that today you should be able to walk as much as you need to the clinic and come and see us. But that's not happening. So what's going on with your eating habit? I am still following the calories, but I think I'm going to have to take in a lot less calories than 1,200 to make any difference. You're eating too much. You're eating five to six times what you should be right now. And that food is more important than saving your life. No, it's not. I mean, in that moment, if she is that, like, serious about her food, it's kind of scary. Because we've seen this before, it don't end well. Uh, it's just, it's been a struggle for me to figure out how many calories I need to get it off faster. I mean, like, all home cooked, low fat, low carb, high protein food. Uh, low fat, low carb, by now you should have lost something. But that's clearly not the case. Because you look like you have gained. No, that's not true. I oh, shit. Doctor now can see it, too. I swear that man's got fat vision, man. He can see right through the fat to your skeletal composition and just tell if you're big boned in it or not. But I, I swear that man is, like, judging, like, measuring her double chin with his eyes right now and figuring out how much weight she's lost. I have lost weight because I can feel it in a lot of ways. You know, my clothes fit better, and it's easier for me to sit up than it was when I left the hospital. So I know I'm making progress, but I may not have lost the amount of weight that I should be losing. But that's because I think the diet is wrong, and 1,200 calories is still too much for me. All right, let's give her 600. That's like four protein shakes. That's all she can have. Um, George, you're delusional if you believe that. You think uh, you're doing okay because you feel like your clothes are baggy. I can see you right now, and I can tell you have gained. The only question is how much, and that's why it's important we see you immediately. Because if you undo the progress we made with you, your situation is going to get much worse very soon. I'm okay. off of... I mean, it's pretty bad whenever you're just up and down, up and down, but man, what a waste of a golden opportunity. They got her to lose so much weight in two months if she really has gained. I'm off of my oxygen. Um, I'm no longer using oxygen. You haven't needed to use that for a while. You just convince yourself you need it. So the only progress with that is you no longer pretending you can't breathe on your own. So that doesn't show much progress either. Well, I can walk, so there's that. I can walk further, too. How far you can walk? Okay, that's just because you've been getting up out of the chair. That doesn't mean you haven't been eating. It means you're pushing yourself instead of sitting there and saying, I can't, I can't, I can't. I walk about 40 feet. Well, PT doesn't agree with you about that. But if that's true, then what's the problem walking to a car to come here? It's just too far still and too hard for me to do. Joyce. I want you to stop making excuses and uh, come to the clinic in the next 48 hours if you want to keep doing the program, okay? Okay. You can get... Damn, Dr. Dow's throwing out demands. I like this. All right, let's see if she can make it. Here, Time trial. Medical transport. You don't need that. And it is just an excuse not to do much physical activity. And saying you won't fit isn't a good excuse either. If you want to use that as your next excuse, because there are taxis where you can use a wheelchair or scooter. So you need to figure that and get here in the next two days so we can see. Right, I didn't even think about that. There is actually no excuse that she should have at this point. Where your weight is at. If you want to continue with the program, you got that? Yes, I do. We have a long way to go to get you to where you need. But the way we're going... Uh, I don't think we ever gonna get there, and that, that's my concern. So you need to work hard to show me you can do this. And what I need to see from you is some effort to turn your life around, and evidence you're willing to do what you need to save your life. If you don't...
I mean, you're definitely your own worst enemy. I was hoping for a lot more for her because she started off at such a good pace with being in the hospital, the controlled diet. But this is going to go bad. Do this and keep making more excuses. It's not going to be good for you. Right. I don't want you to think that that's the case because I am working very hard. I just, I know that I have to lessen. 1,200 calories is too much for me. You keep saying that, but you're eating five times that, and you either don't realize that or think you can convince me of the delusion you want. No. But I'm telling you right now, unless you quit the program, we'll find out where your weight is at when you get here, and we'll see. Okay? Okay. Yeah, we better be careful, because she can't use the air calories argument anymore. She's off the friggin' oxygen. Should have got the low-calorie oxygen. This could have ended up way better for you. I guarantee it's not going to be good. I'm going to work my hardest at getting to be at the clinic with transportation as soon as I can. I've, yeah. I'm going to work very hard. Well, you have two days. I think that's a little unfair, but I'll do my best. Good. Okay, Joyce. I hope to see you soon. If you need it. I mean, technically you missed the appointment. You're wasting his time, so I don't think he has to sit here and kind of just bend to her will and be like, all right, you have a little longer or anything. Demanding for her to get there, I don't think it's too far out of the question. I need medical transport. No, you don't. So if you need anything else, let me know. I know my body, but okay, whatever you say, Dr. Now. I don't think Dr. Now is being fair because whether he believes me or not, I know I'm doing everything I'm supposed to be doing. I can't help that the results don't show that. It's the program that's failing, not me. But I'm not going to let this get me down or discourage me. And I'll keep working just as hard and even harder now. Because I'm going to... You're going to have to work a hell of a lot harder than you have if your only excuse is 1,200 calories are too much for me. I have to adapt the plan I have to work for me. And I also have to figure out how to get to his office in the next two days. But I just don't know how right now. This is not safe. After I talked to Dr. Now a couple days ago, Don got me a scooter to try to use to get around. I think we should get... I mean, I'm kind of surprised she didn't have one off the start, but it's a slow ride. Take it easy, I guess. The wheelchair, just in case she needs it. Am I on... I... Just go, you're on... I can't you, judge if I'm on I the can sidewalk. Tell you, I'll tell you if you're on the sidewalk. The you're back of me. And then I called my mom, and she flew back down immediately to make sure I get to Dr. Now's. My good? Hey, for a mom that left you alone at the start, she's doing a lot to try to get back in your good graces. We found a way to get a taxi and get to just drive your scooter into it, and it gets secured. And I'm praying I'm able to do this without something really bad happening. Okay, I'll see you guys over there. Bye. Bye. See you over there. And I'm really scared right now. And I really don't think this is a good idea. But I don't really have a choice. If I want Dr. Now's help, I have to do this somehow. I mean, she's out of options. She kind of is squandering this golden opportunity. So nobody can really feel sorry for her at this point. If she really has gained weight, I don't know yet. Uh-oh. Yeah, am I good? Yeah, they put a speed bump there to keep fat people out. That's crazy for a bariatric clinic to have a little bump there. But at least it makes people walk in and get some exercise. I guess that's what they're going for. Okay. I can't handle that hump on the scooter. I have to walk in with the walker. Do you need your walker? walker? Yeah, but have the wheelchair ready. This is taking so much out of me. I wish Dr. Now would just listen to me and see the fact I can't walk yet isn't my fault. And so having to do this is abusive and not right. Uh, that's a strong word and it absolutely is your fault. You have to come to terms with that or this doesn't get better. Like you have to take accountability for what you did to yourself just like I do. I'm not going to sit here and sometimes I like blaming stuff just to be funny, but it's my fault. At the end of the day, it's my fault. Are you ready there? Yep. Joyce? We have to do the walker again. I think, because I don't think this fits through. through. Okay. I 
wondering if she's jumping right back up to the walker. Or why not just use the walker the whole way? She said she could go 40 feet. I think this is right about her max. I think she could have did it. You're running me over. Ready. I'm right behind you. It's right there. Thank God I made it here, but I don't even know if I have anything left to get on the scale. I'll do my best. I'm just completely and utterly physically exhausted. You better dig deep. <laughs> oh, fuck me. That's a lot more than 1,200 calories. Holy shit, you gained 58 pounds? Eating yogurt? I gotta see what the hell she was eating, man. I wish they would've... They need to set up hidden cameras in the house at this point. My 600 pound life, this is me asking you to put cameras in their houses so we can see how the hell they're eating because that would have made a hell of a show. Smile, you're on candid, fat camera, whatever. That can't be right. There's no way that's right. Because I'm working so hard. I know I lost weight, a lot of weight. Yeah, we're gonna start crying now. Let's we what re <laughs> let's reweigh ourselves. She's gonna lose a little bit of liquid weight here. So that's wrong. It has to be wrong. I just wish Doctor Now would believe me. I'm doing everything right, so the program and the diet has to be wrong. Because none of this makes sense. So the program that's worked for like thousands of other people just happens to not work for you. All right, we figured it out. That's what it is. Come in. Hello. Hello, Dr. Neal. How y'all doing? I'm in a lot of pain right now. Well, uh, you know, if you stop convincing yourself you can't get up and giving excuses not to do any activity, you would be able to get around easier. But this level of activity is still less than what you should be doing every day. But the bigger problem right now is that in the past six weeks, you put back on almost 60 pounds. You want to tell me what? Uh, six weeks? I mean, she's, she had to be hitting that lasagna awful hard, man. I, well, she's like friggin' Garfield with the lasagna, I guess, putting on that much damn weight. Why that is? Um, well, I've been doing everything I'm supposed to. And then actually with the eating habits, I've been doing really, really well. So I don't know other than the fact that I'm putting on water with my lymphedema, like sitting. Okay, Noah's Ark. Like you are not sinking. It is not that much water, even though you could put on water. You have to be on your feet a lot more than that in order to do it, though. I know because I put on like 30 pounds in one weekend. My surgeon didn't believe me. I showed up the, like the following Monday. And he was like, oh, okay, well, shit, you weren't lying. And that's actually on my channel. I think I interviewed him and asked him that at one point. I'm here having it hang low and not have my legs up more frequently like I usually do. So you say you gain 60 pounds of water on a car right here because you're sitting up? That's not reality. Honestly, I, I really, I, I don't know what else I can tell you, but it's the truth. It doesn't settle that quick, though. It's usually the next day when that happens or it gets worse. You want to believe whatever you want, but that's not going to change the fact that you are kidding yourself. And you're not going to live much longer like this. I'm sorry, I can't do this, and I, I don't think I'm going to be able to make it back in the taxi like I did. The car ride was too much for me, and I think I need to go to the hospital. I mean, I just don't. I don't have the ability to walk. Damn, she's tapping out. She's like, them steps in here ain't no shot I'm taking them back out. This is crazy. Like, I'm very dizzy, and I think I'm having a heart attack. You don't look like you are. <laughs> Just kind of fades a little slowly. I don't think that's what a heart attack looks like. Now what you do? You want to go into the hospital? Oh, yes. Like, my hips are just so spread out right now. And all I know is something's wrong with my heart, and my weight has been on my knees, so it's making my feet and my legs fall asleep. And it hurts. 
Can your hips cause a heart attack? I don't think that's how it works. Because Shakira would have had one by this point. But I don't, I'm pretty sure it's not how it works. So bad. And I need to lay down before I pass out. All right. If you think you're dying, we get you to the hospital and get you checked out. Okay. 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 That's a new thing. Cardiac calorie arrest. I've never seen that move before. This is a very bad situation we have in Joyce. Not only is she gaining again and heading in the wrong direction with her health, but she's convincing herself she's doing the diet and everything she needs, while also playing games and trying to manipulate the situation. So this is very... I mean, to be fair, manipulation's the name of the game. If, if she wasn't able to manipulate people, her mom wouldn't be coming over to make her food, she wouldn't be flying down, Dawn wouldn't be doing that little finger blaster move she does. Like, she had to figure a lot of this stuff out. There's a problem, and it's only gonna get worse if we can't get her to wake up before it's too late. But to be safe, if she's having there is any... Damn, that EMT's probably Dr. Now's next patient. He's getting up there, too. ...issue... We'll get her to the hospital and run some tests to see what's going on. But That's what I look like in my security uniform when I was 19. The bottom of your belly is almost popping out of the bottom. It was bad. There is no real positive outcome to this situation because either she's suffering a medical emergency where her body will start giving out and there will be likely nothing we can do to help her. Or we will determine there is nothing wrong, and she's making all this up to get out of this situation and get a medical passport home. Either way. I'm pretty sure she's just getting, trying to get out of walking, but also, can you guys imagine me guarding a place? Like, I didn't do shit all. Like, if you wanted to come in there and rob the place, I was just chilling. Also, they made me guard a power plant at one point, and they were like... If coyotes come, here's friggin' bear mace. What's the chance that I'm like friggin' Legolas with some bear mace and a coyote's not gonna eat my big ass? It wasn't gonna work out for me. I quit that job. She started complaining about a number of issues, claiming the activity she had from the trip there pushed her body to the limit. But we finished. Damn, Dawn, what are you doing? You still haven't clipped her toenails. Take this lady to get a pedicure or something. I think pedicure's the feet. Maybe it's manicure. I don't know. I'm a man. She's giving her a checkup and running some tests, and there are no immediate medical issues with her that we need to address. So she's fine, and she likely made this all up to get out of an uncomfortable situation she didn't want to be in, and to get the medical transport she wanted. Now, this is extremely manipulative behavior that I am very concerned about. I mean, technically it worked in her favor, just like probably throwing a fit has always worked in her favor. Hi, Joyce. Hi, Dr. Now. How are you feeling? I'm feeling quite a bit better now that I'm laying down. Well, as you know, all your tests are looking good. Are okay? they? Yeah. Thank you. So you're not having a heart attack or dying? Okay, well, I'm very relieved. Well... Shocker, like you didn't friggin' know that when you did that little, uh, move like The Walking Dead. I think you already knew everything was fine. But it's only a matter of time before your body actually gives out. And this idea that you think you're de doing okay when you're not able to walk. Two months is enough time to make a 100 pound weight loss. Okay? But you gain 60 pounds instead. And it's because you... It was 58, Doctor, now. We're, we're adding an extra two here. We just don't do that when we get that damn big. You gotta give us a little... You gotta give us a little bit of, like, a gratuity here. Like, give us a little tip. We lost... Or we gained 58, not 60, all right? You're not sticking to the diet, and you're lying about it. No, I'm not. I'm sticking to a 1,200-calorie diet. Like, I, I watch it very closely. And so if I need less calories, I'll have to take in less calories. Okay, Jules, I'm done playing games, so here's what we're gonna do. I want you to start going to psychotherapy, okay? So we will set that up for you, and you need to go to that. I've already had that. I mean, she probably needs therapy. They put my ass in anger management therapy when I was a little kid, but then they wanted my mom to come in, and, uh, yeah. I blamed it all on my mom for me being, like, a little rage case, 
And my mom said, you little mother, you're never going back here again. So. Therapy when I was younger. You need more. Okay, but I need medical transport to go. I can't put my body through this again. If you agree to go to therapy, I won't get you medical transport to do it, okay? Okay, that's fair. And then I want you to come back to see me at the clinic without medical transport in one month. And I want you to lose 50 pounds in that time. Okay. All right, we got a fresh start here. So we're, we're let's restart things. Let's start working in the right direction and we'll see how this goes. I'm doing as much as I can to lose more weight and to walk more. Damn, that's the saddest looking wiener I think I've ever seen. Dr. Now still has PT coming three times a week and I'm working hard with the exercises they give me. So I'm excited about that. And me and Don are only eating healthy still. Ugh, egg whites, the saddest part of the egg. I feel like I'm doing really good, even though I still may not be able to walk as much as Dr. Now wants me to. I'm supposed to I mean, that's healthy, but that mountain probably ain't doing you any favors here. That's definitely way too much of a portion. I don't think she realizes how big her portions are. ...to see him again for another appointment next week, but he's not sending any medical transport. So I'm not sure I'm gonna be able to do that if Dr. Now won't help me get there again. So despite not being able to deal with my issues with my mom, I'm trying to get to the point where it won't be too much for me. I'm just not sure. Doctor, now ain't your daddy, even if he did give you that leg workout earlier. Like, you need to get your ass there, be an adult, do the responsible thing. Sure, if I'll be able to get to that point by next week. Yeah, better, or else you're gonna end up with a 48-hour challenge again. Doctor, now told me that my last official weigh-in was 611. But I still think there was a malfunction with the scale, and that I actually weigh a lot less. And so I'm really hoping to see a big payoff with a lot of weight loss today. Yes, we need to make them calibrate the scale. That is definitely the issue here and not the amount of calories you're intaking. Hmm, got it, got it. Joyce? I'm hoping I might actually even hit the 150 pound goal Dr. Now gave me. Okay. Damn, she's short. <laughs> Shit, this dieting, dieting, this ain't going well. Mom's got a shock face on. Like, you guys didn't see what the hell she was eating, unless she was sneaking a Snickers from her prison pocket. I think that's the first time I've seen her with a little smirk on her face. I think she's got just one of them evil girl personalities. There's just no way. It just doesn't make sense. But I know now the scale is definitely messed up. I think your head's a little messed up, but the scale gremlins catch another one, guys. They're always messing with them damn scales. So I'm really upset because once again, I'm figuring Dr. Now isn't going to believe me when I tell him that the scale has to be wrong. All right, Jewish. So we got your medical transport here because you're still not walking like you need and making progress with your activity. And on top of that, in the last three months, she gained another 12 pounds instead of losing any weight, much less. I mean, to be fair, she lost over 200 pounds in two months. So we don't have to buy this whole diets don't work for me philosophy she has. They definitely work. Her own, like she's self-sabotaging to say the least. 150 pounds she should have. So things don't look good at all. And I'm not interested in any more excuses or games from you. So if you want to move ahead, I'm giving you the same ultimatum as the last time. For every month that passes from here, you need to lose 50 pounds. But if you don't come back in three months, you're done. But this time, no medical transport will come to get you. So you need to be walking on your own too. So we will keep sending PT to you and poor out psychotherapy. But other than that, I mean, even if she's getting a little bit better physically, she should take some motivation from that and that make her want to get better. I was rooting for her too, man. She's got the whole rosy cheeks like me. Somebody asked me if I have friggin' lupus the other day. Don't diagnose me with shit. I don't even know what it is. 
But if you don't start losing and hit these goals, then at this point you're on your own because we're giving you every tool and every opportunity and there's not much more I can do for you. After a year of trying, you haven't lost anything. So at this point, it's clear you don't really want to do this. You, I just don't think you understand how hard this has been for me and that I've been working really, really hard at it. And I put effort working really hard at eating too damn much but yeah it's nobody said it was going to be easy i think you were the one that thought surgery was like the cure-all be-all like every one of us does when we get to this weight we're like oh we need surgery cut out our stomachs that's not the answer that's just part of the equation you still have to change your life afterwards or it'll just shoot right back up and every single day Suck i just i don't know what bully. else to say i really I'm at a loss for words because I never thought that this would happen. But this is all a result of your choices. So nothing is going to get better for you unless you make the choices you need. And the bottom line is you don't want to. And unless that changes, we can't help you. If you have a medical emergency, we'll treat you. But I hope you wake up before that happens because we may not be able to do anything to help you to save your life at that point. So. You don't have to get it right away, but at some point, like, it has to start clicking to you. I feel like if TV, if I had cameras watching me, I would have been a little more serious at the start, because I effed up at first, too, so sometimes I'm a little hard on these, but I feel like I'm making fun of my old self, because I did this stuff. I effed up, but I finally got it together at some point. I wish you good luck. Okay. Okay. Bye. Bye. Can I have this walker? I don't even want to live here anymore. I just want to go on. All you had to do was piss her off to get her to exercise. Damn, I could have pulled that off. It's very unfortunate that Joyce has wasted so much time. But at this point, we have given her every tool and chance we can. Hopefully, this ultimatum wakes her up. But with what Joyce has shown me so far, I don't think it's likely I'm going to see much more of her unless it's for a medical emergency. Sadly, I think this chick's in Never Never Land, and I think her mom's going to outlive her, which is really sad to say, because no parent should have to bury their kid. I don't think Dr. Now is being fair or reasonable at all. So I'm really upset, and I'm not sure I even want to do this anymore. You know, I've given 100% of me to this program since the beginning. So I'm not failing the program. The program's failing me. Shut up and start, like, actually taking accountability, walking, pushing yourself. Nobody could do it for you. You have to want to do it. Lady, I had such high hopes. And then I remembered the friggin' fake heart attack clip. And then I was like, why am I sitting here saying I hope she does well? I know she doesn't. How is that my fault? I know I've made progress and I'm doing better because I can feel it. And my mom sees it and Dawn sees it too. So if everything I've done is still not good enough for Dr. Now, how do I go back and find a way to give even more now? Right, Dawn the double dip diva that's double scooping every single thing she gives you. That lady sees your hard work. This is annoying. It's been three months. What are we looking at? What's over there? I mean, they're all just staring out the window. Since my last appointment with Dr. Now, I was pretty upset after it. But when I came home, me, my mom, and Don all talked about what I should do. And we all agree that the situation that Dr. Now put me in, where I had less than three months to make the progress he wants, wasn't fair. But they both encouraged me to still not give up and to keep trying. So that's what I... Sometimes it takes a little longer than that to get it through your thick skull, but I'll look it up and see if I can find a current picture of her to throw in here, and if I can, if she hasn't passed or something, which I think she's working towards at a very fast rate, I'll throw it in this right here. I've been doing, and I can really feel how good I'm doing just in the last few months. So I thought maybe I'd practice going over that threshold and kind of just sit outside in the wheelchair for a little bit. You think that's a good idea? Yeah. Okay, so...
Why don't you carry over the threshold, Don? I mean, you're already doing that little crab finger to come here move on her, I guess. We kind of have to clear a pathway. Is that better? Yeah, okay. But I'm still not able to walk as much as Doctor now wants, or get in a taxi or a regular vehicle. And he still won't send me a medical transport. And the three-month deadline he gave me to come back with the progress he wanted was today. Does that door open up any wider? Damn, that's why they were staring out the window. They were trying to see if Dr. Now sent any drones to see how good she was doing. I'd be scared of that man, too, if I was still over 600 pounds. He's a little intimidating. No, that's as far as it goes. And I'm willing to go back and do that. But I can't if Dr. Now isn't going to help me get there. But I'm not giving up on myself. I plan to keep working as hard as I can and to continue pushing myself. And my mom's been coming down every month to help me and encourage me. Yeah. Good job. Very good. I still have good encouragement, but she's probably back up to about close to seven at that point. I haven't worked up the courage to talk to her about things. A little bit further. But it's not as high of a priority for me because I've researched it and I think getting my activity up is going to be the key to making more progress. I'm so excited. This is the first time you've been out. Give me five. Yes, yes, yeah. yes. Good deal. No, you haven't been able to do this in years to get outside. At your other place in, in Kansas, you couldn't get on the deck and sit out there. You can never get... That's great, but Dawn likes to give her two, so yeah. Get out there. So this is a big achievement. I'm so proud of you. I came down to Houston and took this leap of faith to save my life. And I've had to give up everything I've known, and it cost me my life in Kansas. So I'm not stopping until I accomplish what I came here to do. She's got it. Okay, I'm going to grab your wheelchair. To be fair, I don't really think there's much going on in Kansas, so you're not missing too much. Houston's probably got a lot more fun stuff to do. What you think about that, guys? Good. Another thing you accomplished. That's I still good. have just as much faith as I did when I first started this. That as long as I keep doing what I am and stay on track, that I'll get the life I want. And I'm looking forward to that. All right, sweetie, keep putting your faith in Fritos, but that just isn't how this works. You're actually gonna have to push yourself, take accountability, stop saying the scale's broke, this or that. You're your own worst enemy at the end of the day. Nobody can do it for you. Like, it's gotta be miserable living that life. I know it is. I know how much it sucks. I've laid in that bed. I've stared at that TV. I've spent years of my life just sitting there going, why me, why me, why me? And that's why I'm sitting here going, not me anymore today. So. If you want to do something about it, I mean, you're going to have to do something. You you can't sit there and expect the world to do things for you. But Joyce, I mean, I wish you the best, but you kind of pissed me off. Like, this episode, very annoying. Doctor Now tried. But, uh, yeah, I'll see you guys later. I'm out of here, man. I can't take it. Mm -hmm.